For Session Update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. Today in the Senate, Senator Tomasoni introduced a bill to provide unemployment relief for laid-off Iron Range workers. Senator Dames offered an amendment to the bill that would have created a tax cut to businesses due to the $1.6 billion surplus in the Unemployment Insurance Fund. Debate ensued. The Republicans argued that the bill should most closely resemble the House version for quickest passage and that the amendment makes sense. The DFL preferred that this kind of amendment be brought through committee separately rather than be attached to an emergency measure. The amendment was not adopted and later the clean bill passed easily with 62 voting for and three against. Here are some highlights from the floor debate. Senate file 1006 is the Iron Range Mining and Related Industries Extended Unemployment Benefits Program. Um, and members, uh, basically what this is, will do is it will extend unemployment benefits to um, people in the mining industry on the Iron Range who have been laid off and have lost their unemployment benefits for an extra 26 weeks and to other industries that are related to the, to the mining industry. Um, we've been having a unprecedented problem on the Iron Range with uh, unemployment this year, starting way back in May of 2015 when um, as a result of Chinese steel dumping and a low iron ore price across the world, the uh, industry on the Iron Range started to lay people off and, and, and close plants and people have been uh, out without work and without benefits for some time now. Many people have already run out of benefits, some are about to run out of benefits. Many of the people were laid off in May, some were laid off in June, some in July, some in August. And depending upon when it happened, uh, it, the unemployment benefits are running out. We have over 2,000 people from the mining industry itself that are out of benefits and are, are, are laid off, or excuse me, they're laid off and, and may be running out of benefits soon. We have 4,700 other people who are also on, on benefits from other um, related industries. The industry itself is going through a phase that we have not experienced before, I do not believe, on the Iron Range because of the fact that when the mining layoffs started back in May, the economy was churning at record speeds. And in the past, when we have had in industry layoffs, as such as back in 2008 during the Great Recession, the industry itself w went along with the rest of the economy. This time along, though, because of this, the dumping of foreign steel and the subsidizing of foreign steel from, from other foreign governments, the fact is, is that what's been happening is that the industry has laid off people and the Iron Range has had a, a direct effect. I've said this many times in the years that I've been down here that when the steel industry gets a hiccup, the Iron Range gets the flu, and we certainly have the flu this time. The, um, there, is, there are three taconite plants that have idled and, and there are no workers working at it. The Keytac plant is off, the Evlitac plant is off, and North Shore plant, they are all off. The Mintac was off for a while and some of their workers were, were, were laid off. They, they've gone back to work, but um, in, in the uh, related industries, the um, Misabi Nugget, which is an, uh, uh, a nugget plant that feeds directly to a mini mill, they are, they are down. Uh, Magnetation has four plants, and three of the four plants of Magnetation are down, and one of the companies that Magnetation is owner of has declared bankruptcy. So we are in, in having a, um, an industry-wide problem. We're hoping that the industry comes back in the very near future, and so um, this will help uh, the people who have lost benefits and who are not allowed or who, and have not been able to find another job to uh, stay in the area and potentially continue to live on the Iron Range. Uh, we have a number of people in the industry who have been laid off and were collecting unemployment benefits who have applied for federal benefits and have, and have, a, have been accepted and so they are trying to do retraining and our, our fear on uh, some of this is that when the mining industry goes back to work that some of these people may be gone and not be able to, um, when we won't be able to find qualified workers. So these are, these are trained, skilled people who make a very good wage and we want to keep them around and we want them to, uh, to stay on the Iron Range. I just got an email from somebody who didn't qualify for TRA benefits. Um, she's run out of her 26 weeks. She's, uh, she's struggling to, to make payments on her bills. She's having to borrow from her mother who is working at a $10 an hour job. And these kind of things are uh, typical of what goes on when this type of an, uh, 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 catastrophe strikes in an area where I'm at. So members, um, 
I want to put out a clean bill. We've never done any kind of a catastrophe bill or, or benefits bill in the past where we've linked anything to it. And I'm hoping you can see the plight of the Iron Rangers and what needs to go on here and the help that we need. And uh, uh, help me pass this out of here and, and get the benefits to the Iron Range workers. Senator Tomasoni, I thank you for bringing the bill forward. I think you have a good bill and I think that it's something we need to take a look at and I will be supporting your bill. But with that said, I also think that this is an opportunity to take a look at the possible uh, opportunity to create jobs in Minnesota. And back in 2013, the Dayton administration and our DFL legislators enacted a session law that similarly credited funds uh, out of the unemployment trust fund back to the employers. And the reason that this was done was to provide businesses with funds that would cause us to be, cause those businesses to be able to expand and hire employees. And I look at the very same situation today. We're here today because we have folks that are laid off. And at this point, I think it would be a good time to also take a look at uh, coupling with that bill, an opportunity to have our businesses get some money back on their unemployment premiums they've paid in so that they could use that money to expand and to hire employees. The, the amendment that I have put forth uh, does a couple of things. One of the things this amendment will do is it'll create a trigger in the unemployment trust fund when the premiums paid in are more than 104% of the federal level guidelines, it would allow the employer, it would allow a credit to the employers to bring that balance down to 100%. Another thing that this, this amendment will do is it will be a one-time credit in 2016 that would reduce the, reduce the cost of the unemployment insurance for all employers across Minnesota. Under this proposed legislation, the credit would be approximately $271 million, and that uh, would be given as a one-time credit, and that would draw down the unemployment fund to about 85% of the federally recommended level, which is still a buffer. Remember that currently uh, the uh, statute shows that we need to be at 75% uh, of the federally funded level. Refunding that $271 million would be as a one-time credit, and that would allow our employers to do some expansion, look at possibly hiring some employees and things like that. Uh, and also keep in mind that the statute also has a mechanism currently in it that uh, allows the balance of the trust fund when it goes below 75% of the recommended level, that the employers must pay in more to the trust fund to bring that trust fund back up. That's on the low side. On the high side, this amendment will allow for a reduction or a credit back to the employers if it reached 104% to bring it back down to 100%. So with that, I, that is the amendment, and I'll stand for questions. Quite frankly, this is about an emergency and a catastrophe on the Iron Range, and to link those potential benefits for the people on the Iron Range who are suffering and trying to pay their bills and put food on the table is something that we have never, ever done in the history of this, legislat in this legislature. I have a list of over 60 times when we've gone into either sp in special session or we've done special legislation for people who have had uh, catastrophes of some type or other, and not once did we ever link them to something else. And this does not need to be linked. It should not be linked. It should be passed out of here as a clean bill. If you look on your desk, you have a, you have a letter with my name on top of it that it comes from the uh, Chambers of Commerce on the, on the Iron Range in northeastern Minnesota saying they want a clean bill. They want a clean bill because it's the right thing to do and it's the right place to go. The 2013 legislation that was done um, was done at a, at a time when the economy was starting to go up and not down like it is right now. And at that time, the UI tax rate was a half a percent, and it was actually accelerated down to a tenth of a percent. And there was also a special 14% assessment on in 2013 that is not there now. And so the fact of the matter is, is that we aren't generating as much money now as we were for the UI Trust Fund. And the UI Trust Fund is there for a reason, it's for there for a reason, such as what we're trying to get it for today, not to give big tax breaks. If you give a $272 million tax break to businesses now, 
just because you want to link it to an emergency that is not related to it, you run the risk of turning the fund insolvent. And when you turn the fund insolvent, then you have exactly the opposite effect on businesses that you want to have, and that is because their taxes will go up to refund the, the, the fund. So I oppose this amendment, and I, um, I would ask for a roll call vote. I do not want to see this go on the bill. I rise in support of this amendment, and I want to counter a couple of things that Senator Tomasoni said. Uh, first of all, that this is a tax break. Uh, that is inaccurate. This is unemployment insurance. These are premiums that uh, businesses have paid in, and they have paid in more than they needed to, and so the idea behind that is to reduce this. Uh, right now, there's $1.6 billion in that fund. We want to lower it $271 million which still puts that fund 10% above what the federal guidelines are for that, 10% above where they're at. Uh, secondly, uh, and, and related to that, as Senator Tomasoni said, that we run the risk of this fund being insolvent by doing this, and that is exactly opposite of where the federal government says we need to be on this. Thirdly, he said that the economy is perhaps moving down a little bit, and maybe that's one of the reasons uh, why we need to help the rangers the miners, but I want to say that in my, communi my communities, I have more than 25 communities of, of one size or the other, every one of those small businesses, if this is truly going downwards or backwards, this makes a big, big difference for those folks. If you're a contractor that build houses, if you're a, a manufacturer, whatever your business is, these premiums having to be paid into this, this pot, rather being in your pocket, will make a big difference for them as well. I've been listening to the discussion, the arguments pro and con, and uh, I, I will be voting for the amendment, but I have to admit uh, I'm befuddled by those that are opposing it because what I'm hearing in opposition is we support it, we want to talk about it, we want to introduce legislation on it, we want to get it done later, nobody opposes this, but please vote no. I, I, don't, I don't comprehend that argument. What I'm hearing is, hey, that's not a bad idea. But then being asked to vote no. Uh, I, I really don't understand, and maybe the, the opposition would like to get up and, and make that more clear for the rest of us, but everything we've heard so far is it's a good idea. The governor said he's open to it. Uh, we don't oppose it. We voted for it in the past. We're going to introduce a bill on it, but vote no because somehow it jeopardizes this bill. That, that simply in my mind is nonsensical. I can't comprehend that logic. If everyone supports it, if everyone's open to it, if everyone says this is a good idea, let's just put it on, match up with a House bill, and be done and get this thing signed in a day or two. Senator Nino, you gave me the perfect introduction to my comments. I served on the UI Advisory Task Force for a couple years. Um, legislators are also part of that task force. And for anyone who was on the Finance Committee, uh, you'll know that I grilled Senator Tomasoni as to the details of his bill. And I did so with saying that, of course, I uh, support the overall effort, but I wanted to make sure that the technical <coughs> details in Senator Tomasoni's <coughs> bill uh, worked and that the UI Advisory Task Force had Bless them. And so I had a lot of questions about the experience rating and how that was handled. And then I asked the director of uh, that uh, UI advisory task force if, in fact, uh, they did approve it. And I felt as though his first answer wasn't even clear. And I asked him a second time because I understand having been on that task force when we were in the red of just how serious it is that we handle this uh, with the kind of respect that it deserves. Because when we make a mistake as to how we treat the UI task force or the UI uh, numbers and the rates, it can really cost our businesses a great deal. And so I would not, I would consider it actually somewhat reckless to put on an amendment that I couldn't ask the, the UI advisory task force folks if they had done actuarial reviews and if, that if in fact it was sound uh, reasoning and rationale. And so uh, while I look forward to seeing some changes with regard to um, 
our approach to the UI trust fund. Um, it seems like we do have some room to make changes this session, and that's gonna be something I support. I support it after it's gone through committee and has been discussed and reviewed by the UI task force. And I thank Senator Bach for letting us know that in fact they were gonna be calling that task force back together to review this proposal. Members, this should go through the committee as, as Senator Bonoff just got done saying and as everybody else is, on our side has been saying because we have to know exactly what the, what the effect of the amendment is gonna be and not just say it sounds good. I know there's going to be a lot of green votes here today, and I want to, on behalf of all the families and communities uh, and businesses on the Iron Range, I want to thank all of you that are going to vote green. There are three people in this chamber that really wish we were not having this conversation today. Myself, Senator Tomasoni, and Senator Saxock. Boy, I wish we weren't here with this bill. I wish we were here trying to lobby for some more money for the Minnesota Investment Fund because we got a new wood products industry coming to the ranch or some kind of a value-added steel or other mining operation coming to the range. And someday we're going to be doing that here. And I think we're all probably going to feel pretty good about that because the range is a bunch of pretty resilient people and we're going to turn the corner.